Doc. Up next, a look at Telestration's Upside Drawn, a new team-based version of the classic party game from the op. Please note, the op provided us with a review copy of this game. No other compensation was provided. All right, I got to start this review by uh, sharing my bias here. I think Telestrations is one of the best designed party games of all time. The original Telestrations. I love Telestrations. It's the one game I break out pretty much anytime we get a group of six or more people together and it's supposed to be a party atmosphere. So I got to say when the op posted in a board gaming reviewer group on Facebook and was like, we're looking for reviewers. I jumped at this. I was like, oh my God, a new Telestrations. I got to try this team-based version. This looked great. I had, I had to write right away. And then thank you, the op, for replying positively. So Telestrations Upside Drawn that's this new edition, is designed by Kane Klenko. This is a, a really big name that you're going to hear a lot in the 2019s and 2020s for games. Kane Klenko is knocking it out of the park lately. Uh, this has been published by The Op this year in 2020. This drawing game plays 2 to 12 players, broken into 2 to 4 teams. For a look at what you get in the box, be sure to check out our unboxing video on YouTube. Now, there's not a lot to talk about here. Uh, pretty basic. Four drawing boards, two-sided, some nice fine point markers, which is a note for people who played the original game. Nice fine point markers. A uh, set of cards with 1,000 different clues included in the box. A die to determine which category you're drawing and some scoring tokens. Everything's pretty much excellent quality, no complaints. It's great. Uh, one slight adjustment. It's actually 4 to 12 players, not 2 to 12. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that is... <laughs> that's me typing badly yeah it's teams you can't play teams of one this game would not work as a two-player game so nothing unexpected as it's a quality similar to the original games with those nicer markers uh which we are fans of here uh but the similarities sort of end there yeah so one of the things is this is a team game uh each team is gonna have two to three members during each round of the game one player called the guy is going to be moving the drawing board and the only thing they are allowed to say are the words up and down to another player, the artist. Now, the artist, all they do is hold the marker and they follow the guide's orders of going up and down. So they're the ones getting like doing the drawing while the other player is moving the board. And they are trying to guess the clue. Now, if you do have a third team member, if there is one, they stand on the side and they're also trying to guess. So in case anyone missed it, the important thing to note here is that one person is drawing by moving the board. Well, another person just holds the pen steady, and it's the person holding the pen that's trying to guess. So, think a strange sort of turtle graphics, for those of you old enough to recognize <laughs> that, uh, with the difficulty turned up to 11. Oh, oh, man, can you imagine a programming win, lose, or draw with turtle graphics? Oh, I want that game now. Where you have, like, cards to program it out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I kind of want that. Especially if you don't get to see it. You just have to look at the programming language and try to guess what's being drawn. Oh, anyway, I, the shine got me off on a tangent there. <laughs> so what's being drawn each round is determined by a category die with each clue having five different options for each card. Sorry, each clue card having five different options. There are person, place, action, thing, or phrase. Uh, the sixth side of the die is a wild where the player who rolls the die that turn gets to pick the category. The interesting thing here, though, is they don't get to pick the category. They don't get to see the card before they pick the category. So you got to pick the category before you see it. Because just drawing something in this convoluted manner isn't difficult enough already. <laughs> now, to make things easier, on the guesser, the guide can use hints. Now, these are on the side of the board. These include hot, cold, sounds like, narrower scope, and broader scope. And those can be used to try to help uh, your team. Now, you keep playing, everyone drawing at once, no looking at each other's boards. Uh, though you can listen to each other's clues, which is actually a big part of trying to figure it out when someone's on the right track and you're on the wrong track. Uh, the first team to correctly guess the clue wins the round. They're going to get a number of points based on the difficulty of the word that's indicated on the clue card. Game keeps going around and around, playing multiple times until someone hits 20 points. And we should mention that by the rules, you can't actually point at these hints. Nothing so simple as that, but we'll get back to that later. <laughs> So as for my overall thoughts on Telestration's Upside Drawn, I have to start by saying I'm not normally a big fan of party games in general. There are a handful that I do really enjoy, and the original Telestrations is one of those, along with a few other games like Concept, Codenames, and Medium, just to give you an idea from where I'm coming from. And I'm a bit sad to report this game is not really a Telestrations game to me. It's, in te it's Telestrations in name only. 
because the whole thing in telestrations and the tele part of it is that it's based on the classic game of telephone where you are passing the your booklet around and hoping it gets back to be the same answer. None of that's in here. This is more like a traditional drawing party game, like your Pictionaries, or for those of us old enough, win, lose, or draw. What I am happy to say, though, is that Telestrations Upside Drawn does stand on its own. It brings something totally new to the drawing party game genre with its unique method of tune-based play. The most brilliant thing here is that thing that I, I have to harp on because it's that aspect where one player is manipulating the board while it's another player who's holding the marker and trying to guess. This is where all the fun is. This is what makes Upside Drawn uh, a neat game as it is. Because not only are players forced into the unfamiliar action of trying to draw by moving a board, but you're moving the pen instead of the paper, or sorry, you're moving the paper instead of the pen, you're also drawing upside down. And what we found this does is this levels the playing field in a rather hilarious way. Like this unique drawing method means that anyone who's normally an expert artist is pretty much on the same level as people can barely draw a stick figure because it doesn't matter how good you are. You're no one, unless maybe you spent your life learning to draw by moving the paper, you're not going to be good at this. Yeah, don't expect anyone to wow you with their artistic skills. More like be wowed if you can manage to correctly identify a single item that has been drawn. <laughs> Now, similar to the original game, uh, one of the things we did not love was the scoring system. Now, first off, I have no idea who assigned the point values to these clues, but multiple times we're like, what? How is that worth one? Like, how? Uh, there is no way that that should have been worth one point. Added to that is the fact a full game is meant to be 20 points. Now, I don't know who put the box, the time on the box, but I don't think anyone could have done. Like, on the box, it says you can play this game in 20 minutes. Like, if you're trying to get to 20 points, it takes forever. Like, I don't know how you can get to 20 points in 20 minutes because that means you would have one minute to guess, and that's only if the same team won all 20 times in a row, right? Like, just it's it's not actually possible. The same team would have to win around every minute to fit that playtime. So the playtime that they put on the box doesn't seem to be based on their own scoring system. So, Well, I, now, interestingly, I just noticed on the Board Game Geek page, it says the first team to reach 10 points. Oh, the rules are definitely 20. Yeah, no, that, that's just interesting why why it's different on uh, the Board Game Geek page. Because um, 10 points might make it might possible. Possi it, it's possible. Yeah, but sadly, party games are very hit and miss when it comes to scoring in general. Mm. And unfortunately, this is 0 for 2 in scoring on telestrations. Though, I don't actually think that's a big yeah. deal. Uh, the playtime versus scoring discrepancy is a far more concerning issue but now it seems i've discovered that there is some confusion there too so yeah whoever who made the board game geek entry might be wrong on something there possible because i gotta say for our games we usually host ruled it we either stop playing like basically when we got bored right like hey we've been playing for an hour it's time to stop whoever had the highest points wins or uh we did what board game geek seems to recommend we found 10 points seemed to be a good good spot for about an hour's worth of play but even 10 points still took us about an hour not 20 minutes uh, and just to confirm, the op has 20 points on their product page. Yeah. So I said, well, that's, like I said, this is right from the rules, say 20. Yep. So I don't, I don't know about that. I, I, 10 points seems to be a good for, for a solid game. But again, you're not going to finish in 20 minutes. Now, if more of the clues were with two and three, possibly, but most are just worth one. So now, as Sean mentioned earlier, there's one other aspect of the game that we did end up house ruling, and that's the use of hints. Because the rules as written are literally, you got to say up, Move the board over so the artist marker is over the little flame pitcher for hot and say down and then say up. And if you want to say hot, 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 you can say down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And we found that by the time you do that, by moving the board, the person's drawing's focus changes to that icon and they totally forget what's supposed to be hot. Like they don't remember what they just drew or what they just said. Like it, it seemed almost like more of a distraction than an actual hint. And plus, there's the amount of time wasted. Like, you're telling them to go up, you're having to slide the board over to a different part, and you have to drop it down. Like, there's some skill required. And it just didn't seem to, it seemed overly complicated. So the house rule we came up with was pretty simple. Most of the time when you're moving the board, you're only using one hand, or you can just stop and you just tap with your finger on the clues. Yeah. So, and honestly, this seems like a no-brainer. When the game is already stretching its time with scoring, adding another feature that just prolongs the game just seems like a poor choice. The hints are exact enough to make quicker access to them 
turn are not exact not exact enough to make a quicker access to them any sort of a game breaker. Plus, you're playing a team game. If everyone's playing by the same rules, you're all on the same page. Like if every team can tap on the on the hints, every team can tap on the hints. Right. Now, I, these two complaints, right? The scoring and, and the hint system, these are minor complaints. They really are. These are easily fixed with house rules. I like. I almost don't want to call them complaints in a way because they're so easy to fix. This is a fun game. The, the illustrations upside down drawn is fun. The, the, the most enjoyable aspect, of course, is at the end of the round. And this is something that reminds me of the original Telestrations. Is sitting there going, what, well, you got that based on that, right? Like that everyone shows. Like, cause in this game, you're all going for the same clue, right? Like you're all trying, every team's trying to draw the same thing. And like, I remember one of them being bite or chew, I think it was. And like putting down everyone's boards and comparing them. Uh, you've seen me share a couple. If anyone follows me on Twitter, you've seen me share a couple of the, the boards we've had up. There's a couple more on the review once that goes live on the blog where you can kind of see what people were trying to draw. And that, that is some of the most fun is looking at the end going, what the heck was that supposed to be? Or the realization as the person was holding the pen, once they finally see why they were drawing what they were drawing to go, oh, that was supposed to be a pine cone. I get it. So that's one of the most fun parts. Overall, we had quite a bit of fun with Telestrations Upside Down. I like that it's team-based. And I got to say, Kane came up with a brilliant way to do a team-based drawing game. Like, I've never seen anything like this. The whole guide artist system is brilliant. And I actually found it a lot more fun than it sounds. Because I admit, when I first heard about that, that sounded more frustrating than fun. The unique drawing mechanics actually worked really well. And they did, I like the fact that they let players with different artistic ability play on a more level playing field. This is a very enjoyable party game in this box, and it's one I'm glad I own. Yeah, I think the teams and the cooperation on this one are the big key to where it can thrive or not. Uh, I could see this as a huge winner when you're able to have another family over and you're competing against them, you know, a, you know, couples nights or something like that, or at a family picnic. Um, whereas it may not be as uh, successful if it's a group of individual friends. Mm -hmm. um, that because that that relationship teamwork thing is part of mm -hmm. the aspect of the game that makes it work whereas the original telestration doesn't matter right it's no. just everyone's individual and and there's no you don't have to worry yeah that's something that unfortunately due to the pandemic i have to admit i have not gotten a chance to try this game with a bunch of strangers as i normally would so if that does happen if we ever go back to game nights at the local game store i'll be sure to share my thoughts to see if things have changed we have only played it with friends and family and i will admit that there is that shared experience the i drew this weird thing which means something only to me and you is definitely can be a part of the game now what i can't say and i feel bad about this is this is i can't say this is a better game than telestrations the original one i love the original telestrations like while we had fun with this it wasn't the fun i've had with telestrations like i think in my entire gaming career i have laughed more and harder playing the original telestrations than any other game i've ever played in my entire life like i think at this point nothing is going to beat the original telestrations as my favorite drawing based party game i, I it's, i'd love to find the game that usurps it that said it's cool to have this as an alternative or an additional drawing game to break out during our next party game night and i gotta say i think this might be a better choice for 3 a.m at extra life because one of the problems we found with the original is when you're trying to stay up 24 hours laughing your butt off at 3 a.m. is actually a detriment to being able to keep going for the rest of the night. Well, for a more in-depth look at Telestration's Upside Drawn, you can head over to TabletopBellhop.com and click on Reviews.